A late night explosion of SpaceX's Starship rocket shook the area surrounding Starbase, Texas. Video captured by Lab Padre at SpaceX's testing site called Massey's shows the rupture happening as the vehicle was being readied for a six engine static fire test about an hour before midnight on June 18th. A typical pre-launch campaign for the Starship program involves a static fire test of both the Super Heavy booster and Starship upper stage. The ship usually sees a single engine static fire to simulate an engine relight in space, and that is followed sometime later by a full duration static fire test using all six of its Raptor engines. Then that's usually followed by a wet dress rehearsal of the full stack at Pad A. This go around, SpaceX performed what appeared to be a nominal static fire of its super heavy booster, tail number B-16, on June 6th. That was followed 10 days later on June 16th by a single engine static fire test of that ship upper stage that was designed for Starship Flight 10. But catastrophe struck in the lead up to that final planned test of the rocket dubbed Ship 36. SpaceX issued a statement at 12.37 a.m. Central Time more than an hour following the explosion. On Wednesday, June 18th at approximately 11 p.m. Central Time, the Starship, preparing for the 10th flight test, experienced a major anomaly while on a test stand at Starbase, SpaceX wrote. A safety clear around the site was maintained throughout the operation, and all personnel are safe and accounted for. Our Starship team is actively working to save the test site and immediate surrounding area in conjunction with local officials. There are no hazards to residents and surrounding communities, and we ask that individuals do not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue. As video captured by Lab Padre and others quickly spread online, SpaceX founder Elon Musk first played it off with a passing reference to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. About an hour and a half later, though, Musk gave a more substantive response, offering an early interpretation as to what may have happened. Preliminary data suggests that a nitrogen COPV in the payload bay failed below its proof pressure, Musk wrote on his social media site X. If further investigation confirms this is what happened, it is the first time ever for this design. COPV stands for Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessels. At a basic level, NASA defines a COPV as consisting of a metallic liner that holds either fluid or gas that is contained within a composite overwrap for strength. Back in 2017, the then COPV lead at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory explained one of the ways that COPV can fail that was notable to the agency at the time. One of the failure modes that has become important is stress rupture life. And that is, stress rupture is the sudden failure of a COPV at typical operating pressures. Um, and we know that this occurs and we can make this failure mode occur in the laboratory. Fortunately, it has not occurred on any flight project, but it, it could. And we need to understand the bounds at which um, it becomes important. Later in the day on June 19th, SpaceX published an update on its website reiterating Musk's post on X. Engineering teams are actively investigating the incident and will follow established procedures to determine root causes, SpaceX wrote. Initial analysis indicates the potential failure of a pressurized tank known as a COPV or composite overwrapped pressure vessel containing gaseous nitrogen in Starship's nose cone area, but the full data review is ongoing. There is no commonality between the COPVs used on Starship and SpaceX's Falcon rockets. As pointed out by the online outlet ringwatchers.com, the Starship's COPV for version 1 could be spotted on the windward side of the ship upper stage during the internal views of the rocket seen on Flight 6. Starship version 2 COPV appear in a similar spot, about 90 degrees away from the payload bay door as seen during Flight 9. Ship 36 was intended to be the fourth flight of SpaceX's Starship version 2. For various reasons, this iteration of Starship has had a number of issues getting through its mission profile. Starship flights 7, 8, and 9 all experienced in-flight anomalies. Flight 7 on January 16 had a so-called harmonic response that caused the vehicle to break apart over the Turks and Caicos Islands. Hey guys! Starship blew up! It just blew up. A similar sight was seen from the ground during Flight 8 on March 6. A hardware failure in a Raptor engine caused what SpaceX described as a, quote, flash that resulted in the loss of the engine, quite literally. 
Then, during Flight 9 on May 27th, following a successful ascent, the ship upper stage experienced a loss of attitude control after failing to deploy the simulator Starlink satellites on board. That last anomaly remains under investigation by SpaceX and the Federal Aviation Administration as of June 19th. SpaceX, of course, has big ambitions for its rocket program. During a company talk held in late May, Musk said they are hoping to perform a catch of the ship upper stage later this year, quote, maybe as soon as two or three months from now. SpaceX also plans to transition to using version 3 of Starship at some point in 2025, which will use the upgraded Raptor 3 engines, as well as many other changes to the upper stage. It's this version of Starship that will be used as part of NASA's Artemis campaign, which seeks to bring humans back to the surface of the moon for the first time since 1972. Musk is also looking to Starship version 3 to make some measurable milestones for this rocket program. Generally, with any new technology, it takes three major, uh, three major iterations of any, major techno of any new technology to have it really, really, really work well. And this, with Raptor 3 with, and Starship and Booster version 3, uh, we, it should be able to achieve all of the things that I just mentioned, which is a rapidly reusable, reliable rocket uh, with orbital refilling. Basically, all of the ingredients necessary uh, to make life multiplanetary will be achieved with version 3 of Starship, which we're aiming to launch for the first time at the end of this year. Preliminary indications suggest that the 10th flight of a fully integrated Starship rocket was as close as June 29th. But with the damage to the company's test stand and now needing to ready a new ship upper stage, the timing of the next flight remains very much in question. Reporting for Space Flight Now... I'm Will Robinson-Smith.